cube down. Now we can begin. Today's creation is one from an image in my head that I cannot seem to place as to the origin. We'll be working with the cube. It seems simple enough and provides a good challenge. How far can I take this basic shape without going into thousands of polygons? Our creature is far more interesting than the basic box. So we rotate 45 on X and 45 on Y Ta-da! A more interesting shape with angles! Yeah, yeah, blah, 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 perspective, whatever. First, our first goal, the shape needs to be easier to form and evolve. Subdividing allows more freedom to scramble things around and generally make a mess of things. The next goal is to achieve the basic shape of the image in my head. I'm sure there are better ways, but I lack references, and the next best way is to make every pro groan in sadness and just go vertex by vertex till things sort of match memory. This is as tedious as it seems, but it yields results. Hang in there with me. This is slow, but it grants a lot of control. Just gonna move the mesh up for better reference points using the axis as a floor, uh, so I don't actually have to put in an actual floor. Uh, and it makes for good reference points for things like tails, feet, bellies, those kind of things. Once the basic body shape begins to look good, we can look to begin other features, like legs. Maybe our big boy could be a little thinner. And more, let's say, stout. Normally, a mirror function would be added to the model to cut my work in half. But that function wasn't cooperating with me, so I had to be extra attentive to select one vertex and find it on the opposite side to move them both identically. And no, I refused the idea of modeling one leg and trying to duplicate it for the other side on a project meant to be simple. I found a workaround. So, to fix this, strap in folks, we go the long way around. We begin by choosing faces instead of vertices, deleting any face that crosses, in this case the y-axis, and connect the open bits for a defined center line, and fill as necessary. Then we choose one half and delete it. Now the nervous bit. Pretend the mirror function works. Imagination got us this far, right? This poor guy needs to be able to chase and menace things, so legs would be a good thing for it to have. For that, we need to make space for the legs, a nice organic means, relatively speaking, for a limb to exist and rotate. With such a thick body, the legs need to be able to lift and drag all that bulk. Therefore, the aim should probably be somewhere in the bulldog or toad area. Could probably use a thicker base, but let's see how it looks in the end. The leg may not need to be too thick. And that looks pretty good for cutting a few corners. But we still only have half of a creature. How I would love to select all of it and add a mirror to this, but in earlier two tests prove I am too dumb to do so. So here's how I solved it. Duplicate with favorite method, shift D for me. Move or wiggle to see the duplicate, but do not place yet. 
change the pivot point to 3D cursor, kindly ask the duplicate to mirror its vertices. I forgot which mirror to select. Good thing Control Z is a bro, letting us experiment with each option until stumbling into the correct selection. Now we have a facade of a whole creature, so grab your comfy cushions and strap in once again, because we're going round the world to fuse this thing into one whole creature. Each vertex along the y-axis is actually two and needs fusing. Luckily, Blender has a function for that, simply labeled Merge Vertices. I am a total fan of the self-explanatory labeling. Good job, Blender. Every option except at first and at last will work against our goal. However, because of the logic in at first and at last, the vertex pairs have to be joined pair by pair. Just have to select one vertex and shift click to select the other hiding vertex. Go to merge vertex at, at first or at last and move on. Only six or seven to go. We know both vertices are selected when all quote unquote paths leading to the soon to be singular vertex lights up. And I double check successful merging in that same manner. If they all light up, good. Enough of the tedious work, let's give this guy some chompers! This guy popped up in my head because of the blast shield-like mouth created for the cannon creep in an earlier video, so we're gonna give this guy that same jaw. I duplicate, I offset, I separate this from the original mesh for easier editing, delete stuff, fill stuff, and you have teeth, extrude and move to thicken it for that blast shield-like structure, move back into place, and you have a jaw. Perfect for menacing that horrible protagonist running around trying to correct all of the wrongdoings in the world. And there he is. My mind agrees that fits the description. Does it look familiar yet to anyone out there? Uh, I still can't place it. Of course, I may be forgetting a detail or two. Like hind legs. I may not be able to throw on some hind legs real quick, but there may be enough time to splash some color on. So I believe he was in the purple range? Like a dark purple? Let's throw in some light at a sun so that we can get a better kind of grasp on what tones we're dealing with. And I don't remember what color the mount the jaw was. Was it like a lighter purple? Maybe it was darker. Well, hmm. Black is always a safe color, right? And he had eyes. Eyes are pretty quick. Uh, we just need triangles and we just need to color them differently. And yeah, just got to make space for it. Let's make them white. And uh, yeah, there he is. So. Does he look any more familiar now? Let me know in the comments below. And next time on Monster Lab, we'll throw something else together.